Welcome to the Cataract Wait Woods Dental Implant Institute, a nonprofit organization dedicated to furthering both education and research in the field of oral implantology. My name is Dr. Waji Khan. I'm a dental surgeon and also the course director for a series of online lectures provided as a service to the profession of dentistry to deliver a literature and knowledge-based approach to dental implant education for practitioners interested in learning more about how to implement the discipline of oral implantology into their clinical practice. This online course should be merged with a suitable clinical course and long-term mentorship study club program so that the learner can maximize their benefit from the didactic online program. The production of this series of lectures was partially funded by an educational grant from the International Dental Implant Academy. Lecture 22. So today we have a lecture about implant supported dentures post insertion care and for this lecture I have a guest speaker or a guest lecturer. Uh, I'm going to introduce here my colleague Kayla Austin. She's a denturist and denture over implant specialist and she works at the Frontenac Denture Clinic. Kayla, welcome to the office. Thank you, Raji. All right, so a couple things we're going to go over. Uh, to start off, we're going to go over some daily care, uh, annual recalls, when you should be contacting your denturist and dentist, some things that you should not do, the lifespan of um, implant-supported dentures, and then, of course, we'll have a brief conclusion as well. Basically, what we have here is in these photographs, what we're trying to demonstrate in these photographs is what it's all about. So here's that bar that we attach to those implants for the patient. Uh, in the next photograph here, you're going to see the actual denture with the processing caps that goes onto that bar. And you see this, this upper denture actually is a nice horseshoe shape. And this is a photograph of the denture in. We also have different types of removable prostheses. This is an example of a removable zygomatic prosthesis that has a bar on it to which a denture can attach. This is another example of the type of maintenance, sorry, another appliance that would require maintenance. So this one over here is a, uh, is a screw retained, also a metal hybrid denture we call it. Uh, this next photograph here basically demonstrates what the tissue looks like when the patient initially comes in. So we want to make sure that the tissues for the patient, not only the prostheses, but that the tissues re remain healthy and that there's going to be no long-term problems, long-term issues like peri-implant mucositis and peri-implantitis, but also to make sure that the prosthesis itself can last a long period of time. And for this particular patient, this is a photograph of the prosthesis in. So I'm going to hand it back over to Kayla as to why. Okay, so why recalls? Why should we be going back to your professional um, after you've gotten your denture? So regular follow-ups eliminate any problems faced in the wearing of dentures. Basically, you spend all this money, you get a Ferrari. If you're not going to go back, well, that's, that's a waste of money. The follow-ups will include insert changes where we'll actually replace the nylon inserts similar to an oil change for your car. So basically you're maintaining your investment. Um, you're not letting things just uh, go to waste. So daily care, uh, just like natural teeth, we have daily duties to maintain those dentures. Just because you're getting your teeth out doesn't mean you should be neglecting things. So different styles of prostheses require different hygiene aids. So different things to uh, Bar retained dentures, single locator attached to dentures, fixed uh, prostheses, they all require some different care. Um, without proper daily care, you can get buildup of plaque uh, and debris can accumulate around your implants, similar to our natural teeth. Just because it's a denture and you have implants doesn't mean these duties um, end right there. So just some photos, um, you can actually see the tissues are looking pretty healthy in these photos. Things are kept fairly clean. This, however, is an example of someone that's just letting things uh, slide. They're not taking good care of, uh, of their investment at all. So some aids that can be used. Uh, basically, you're going to use anything that can disturb the plaque and the buildup. So some great tools are things like Superfloss, uh, end tough brushes, proxy brushes, a water pick, which is not as favorable. These are just some photos. You've got the end tough brush and the proxy brush here. These are great for getting right under the bar and around those locators. So annual recall, uh, we always have patients come back once a year. Um, we book this ahead of time. Basically, they're visiting their clinician for a checkup and a cleaning. So many patients will actually say, well, why do I need to come in for anything else if it feels fine? 
Um, this is a response we see all the time. The patient may not always realize something is wrong or ill-fitting or may even be tolerating something that's not within the norm. Anything to remind them, sorry, another thing to remind them is that these dentures are in their mouth every single day, meaning there's tons of bacteria and germs being harbored in these dentures daily. Uh, and often the drugstore tablets and cleaners are not eliminating any of these. Um, so they, and they also may not be removing them daily, which just builds to the problem. This is also a great time to go over proper cleaning around their attachments, assess everything and anything. In the next slide, we're going to go over in detail what this appointment can include. So again, just because you don't have natural teeth does not mean this appointment is not necessary. So what we would actually do in an annual recall. So we're going to pumice and polish the dentures to remove any of this buildup. Uh, common areas are found to, uh, to have a lot more buildup, um, particularly around the parotid duct. Um, so that's the top by the upper second molar. We're also going to check the fit. Um, if there's a little bit of movement going on, we might even discuss a reline. So we'll check the tissues as well, all around uh, the implants, um, even where the denture is seating, look for any little red spots, anything that could be um, an indicator of either a reline or some, some minor adjustments even. And then of course, we're gonna check the nylon inserts where the, uh, the attachments actually exist. Uh, we wanna make sure they're fitting in nice and snug uh, and we're hearing that, that nice click. Um, so in an annual recall, a proper, a proper assessment of the dentures fit, of course the occlusion, attachments, um, that's all going to be done. You want to check the nylon insert wear and possibly replace these if they are worn. Uh, we're going to show you some pictures next actually of what they'll look like. So again, a thorough pumice and polish of the dentures can be done to remove any of the surface buildup. Uh, we want to keep the denture surfaces nice and smooth and that eliminates further uh, food adhesion where obviously you can have scratches. If the fit of a denture is loose, it will also be a good time to discuss relining to eliminate any spaces that may have been created under the denture from any tissue or bone changes. It's also good to assess the tissue for any red inflamed areas where there may be a heavy contact from the denture rubbing, etc. Okay, so bar follow-ups. So a little bit different. Uh, we might actually see this patient a little more often, possibly twice a year. Um, bars are an excellent way to support a denture and implants. And with that, there are also added costs to a patient's treatment. Uh, why let that investment go to waste? Thinking back to the luxury car analogy, uh, regular maintenance is absolutely necessary. Because the bar is fixed into the patient's mouth, it can harbor tons of bacteria and even calculus. A proper cleaning is recommended every year, sometimes, like I said, even twice a year. This, of course, depends on the person and their manual dexterity, uh, their saliva consistency, etc. The last thing we want to happen is for buildup to occur and destroy the bone around the implant and actually create a total fail of the implant. This is seen from time to time, um, and this is why proper maintenance and oral hygiene is absolutely necessary. So this, um, this just goes over what can happen, right? You have plaque, that can turn into calculus, then we can even start to see some peri-implantitis, bone loss, and then boom, implant failure. So we'll just go over changing the inserts. Um, back to the car analogy again, like tires on a car, inserts in a denture need replacing too. Some patients will see more often than, than others, but on average, it's about six months uh, to 12. Uh, basically, these will wear down over time, they're nylon, um, that's normal, and basically the fit is then jeopardized. So fairly straightforward, uh, you need your core tool to, to remove them, and basically you're just going to pop in um, new ones. You might be going to um, something a little stronger uh, if the patient's wearing them through a lot faster than, than they should be. So relines, um, basically the loss of bone can make the denture feel loose. This is a natural phenomenon. Um, if the fit is substantially loose, you really need to, to have a reline done. So this can be done once every, I'd say three years or so. Um, relines refit the denture um, of the anatomy 
and fill in any areas where there there is space. So it's it's done in, within the same day, which is great. The patient can can get their denture back uh, that exact same day, so they're not going without it for too too long. So knowing when to contact your clinician. Um, if the dentures are not connecting to the implants tightly, if you feel like there's some movement, uh, any sore areas, if you are having difficulty cleaning around the implants or the bar, uh, if something has broken, do not try and fix it yourself, uh, and if anything feels loose or you've got a lack of, uh, of retention. So some things to never do with any denture so never soak your denture in hot water or bleach. Never use super glue if you do break them. No DIY at home uh, uh, denture repairs. Uh, never use toothpaste on them. That will actually scratch the plastic. It's an abrasive. And what will happen is you'll have more and more food, calcium buildup, um, sticking great right to that denture. Um, do not try to adjust your denture at home. We see this from time to time. Uh, and don't leave your dentures in constantly. It's important to take them out, uh, let your tissues breathe, and uh, usually I suggest taking them out at nighttime. It's the best time. So what can you expect to be getting out of your plate time-wise? Um, so many factors can impact this. Uh, someone eating steak and nuts often will wear them down a lot faster than somebody who's eating pasta, chicken, cooked vegetables, basically softer foods. If a, de if a denture is opposing natural teeth, the denture teeth will wear faster than a denture that's opposing another denture. If the dentures are being worn at night and the person is clenching or grinding, this is a very scary situation because this will actually cause extra tension on the implants and surrounding bone, which you can guess can then lead to many complications, even implant failure. The more a denture is being taken out and put back in, the more wear the nylon inserts will go through. We always recommend, again, taking the dentures out at nighttime when you sleep. Um, generally, replacement should be done around six to 10 years. Having said that, I've seen some people go through them even faster. So some things to look for. Um, denture teeth um, are similar to rings in a tree. They will actually tell you a ton. So proper assessment will give the clinician an idea of how old the dentures are. Um, but also the occlusion patterns of the patient. So if a denture tooth structure is wearing down and failing, the functionality of that denture is, is quite pointless. Another thing to assess in the acrylic that is, is the acrylic, sorry, that surrounds the teeth. Uh, is it starting to look dried out, flaking in places? Um, are there thin areas? Are there actual holes where the teeth have worn right through the plastic? These are pretty obvious signs that this person needs new dentures and hopefully they are coming to you because they're seeking a new and better option. So again, just in summary, look for the, the wear of the teeth, um, the, the actual acrylic surrounding the teeth, the fit of the denture itself, and are they coming back constantly for repairs? Okay, so brief conclusion. Um, again, protect your investment. If you're going to spend all the money to, to have implants put in and have an awesome prosthesis put over top, um, there are, there's aftercare, definitely. So the aftercare eliminates problems. Uh, and again, you're following up with the professional that, uh, that made them for you. So just remember, Ferraris needs servicing too. So on behalf of the entire dental treatment team at the Cataraqui Woods Dental Implant Institute, I want to thank you for listening to our lecture.